Hi friends, Ray Lutz with Citizens Oversight. Uh, this is the San Diego County Registrar of Voters office and I thought I'd give you a tour here so that you could sort of see what goes on. Um, behind me is the uh, room that they do the original, when, when the vote by mail ballots come in, the very first time they come in, they go through um, this big sorting machine, but actually that machine in the back back there, the, the second one. Um, let me see if I can give you a little clearer shot of that. Uh, and essentially what it does is it takes a picture of the front of the ballot and so that they can see the signature for later comparison when it, the signature's on file. This is, right now, this is J June 1st about five days before the actual election. Um, there already have been processing vote by mail ballots for maybe um, another five days before this, if not even more. So the ballots first go through a machine that just record, takes a photo of the front of the ballot, which has a barcode identifying the voter. These are vote by mail envelopes, they're not opened yet. And then they're put into uh, what they call um, batch boxes, they're actually these, these postal carrier boxes. So they have about 200 per one of those boxes there. Um, then they go upstairs to a bank of computers where they have a number of people looking over the signatures to do the comparison. So they actually have human operators that that actually say, yeah, the match is okay, and we've identified that this is the right voter. And then the ballots are returned down here, and in the second pass, any that are rejected, or to be rejected, are identified by the computer. And then they go through the machine the second time, which originally just took a photo of it. This time they slice off the top of the envelope and to open them and or if it's been rejected then it's taken and it's rejected out into a reject pile the ones that are accepted are then opened and the um, the envelope with the ballot goes to the next next station um, so the the ones that are rejected uh, they're either going to have no signature or a signature that does not match and the way the law is set up is those people who forgot to sign it are contacted. They have up to eight days to come in and repair, you know, sign their, their ballot. Um, it should be that the people who are, whose signatures didn't match are also notified. But up till now, that hasn't been happening. Uh, I understand that the recent ACLU lawsuit may put an end to that, just ignoring it. And in the second pass, the, the envelopes are sorted by this big sorting machine. You can see this has uh, many, many slots. And what they told me was that they, they don't sort it by precinct, they're sorting it by, just by batch. They keep them in a batch, a mixed precinct batch. Now I asked Michael Boo to tell us how he's processing them this year and they haven't responded to my, my questions yet. So they don't really like to be very open about what they're doing, at least not to me. So that's the first phase of, of uh, essentially, uh, here's a little flow chart that might be of use to take a look at that they have on the wall here. So here you can see uh, they do the original scan and do the signature check, and then do a sorting and opening phase, and then they go into extraction. The quality assurance, they might take it out if it has any, any identifying marks on it, or maybe it's ripped or something else through the process. They might have to, if it's completely ripped or something like that, they may have to remake the ballot by copying all over all of the, all of the, the marks on the, you know, the votes on the ballot over to a brand new fresh ballot. 
most of the districts I go to say that they keep these. Um, here at San Diego, they've been whiting out. Instead of remaking the ballot, they've been adding white out. And there's really no trail, there's no reports or anything that helps us to make sure that's being done properly. And they've only had one set of eyes. You know, it should be a four eyes, two people, two people looking at, at it, you know, so that there isn't a one person problem about maybe biasing the election one, one way by being that person that modifies all the ballots. Okay, let's go on to the next, next one. It's nice to have these little, little uh, signs up here because it tells us what's going on. So after they've done the signature check, then they go through um, the verification, which is upstairs, and then opening, and this is going to be the opening and extraction and quality assurance um, room. Okay. And unfortunately, they put their workers way back there, so it's hard to to really see what's going on. Um, this is a room where in the past we've seen them whiting out ballots and there really should be no reason to white out vote by mail ballots, but let's see what the people are doing here. This is where, apparently, you can see the envelopes are still, still closed. I'm not sure what she's actually doing. Oh, you know what? These might be the ones that have a missing signature. <clears throat> I can move down and see. At some point, they end up, oh, I see in the back there, they are taking the ballots out and looking them over. Um, it's still sort of at a low intensity at this stage. We only have about half of the room occupied. They're checking. And the big question is, are they applying white out? Because we really don't want white out applied at all. Normally these, these tables up here would also be occupied with people pulling ballots out of the envelopes. We can see in the background um, some boxes up there with tags. Um, oh, I see, they're different languages. Vietnamese. Can read that through the IPs here. Those might be original, original ballots. Get the different languages. Filipino. And 
And that looks like all the sample ballot information they have back there. And in those trays, that appears to be maybe voted ballots that are, that are ready for scanning. Okay, let's walk down the way here a little bit. Zoom back out. Now these hallways are public space, so you are allowed to photograph from here. This area, we see them doing something. These two people right here might be remaking a ballot that had a lot of extra marking on it. So the one person on the left is probably reading off what the voter voted for. And by the looks of it, there's, a, there's just a lot of extra marks on the ballot. I can't really see. here. They call this quality assurance. They had no proce written procedures, no reports or logging being done. But it looks like they might even be using a logging sheet here. see that sheet that she was first uh, writing on when we came up appears to be a, a log and that that would be a really big improvement over what they were doing and due to our our oversight and recommendations now as you look back here in this room you can see there they have a storage area and Let's see what, if we can tell what is going on there by just looking at the boxes. So that looks like the San Diego 3rd third, third District, and I can see they have precincts listed there. Those look like precinct numbers. They might be sorting them by precinct, which would be a big benefit for us because we would be allowed to be able to check what they're doing when it comes time to the 1% manual tally. Now let's check these people right here again and see what they do. What's next? like they're now checking that the book that the duplicated ballot is correct this is the kind of thing that we would like to see versus just using whiteout which I haven't seen yet in this visit So it looks like they do have two sets of eyes now looking at the ballots and, and checking them instead of using white out.
sounds that you might hear are from the hallway, not from the room that was before you. This is, by the way, really good progress. Um, took a lot of effort to, first of all, discover that they were using whiteout, and then to put the needed pressure on them, including going through a whole lawsuit, to instill the requirement that they, that they use, that they just don't use that anymore. Now I see the whiteout, you see that pink thing in the tray? That's actually the whiteout applier, it's like whiteout tape. I'll see if they resort to using that at any time. So again, this is June 1st, um, 2018, about five days before the election day on June 5th. It's about 2, 2 p.m. in the afternoon. Uh, they're only processing the vote, early vote by mail ballots at this time. People don't realize that a lot of processing gets done before election day and that you actually have to start doing your oversight but now look at that log sheet she's got there. She's filling it in. That's a really big improvement from what they were doing before where they were doing no logging at all. They had no way to know how many were being done. And normally from what I've seen in other jurisdictions, they actually save both copies so that they can then be referred to later. So it looks like here they're starting another another ballot. She's got a fresh ballot there. She just took the, the top off of it. And now they're ready to go. She's reading off the votes as they go down and she's marking them. So indeed, this is what they are doing. They are doing a, a ballot um, duplication. And again, this is, this is really, really good news because they have really changed their ways if, if indeed they're doing it this way. Okay, so I'll tell you what, um, we're really happy with what we're seeing here so far because the, they have responded despite really dragging their feet. Let's walk down a little ways and see what else is here. Zoom back out. And so I'm looking back up here. That's the entryway. We basically have a big T intersection. We have a room here with some terminals and printers. I'm not sure what they're planning to use these for. No one is in here now. Uh, we see over there at the end some touch screen machines that they do still have to use in the polling places in case they have uh, dis disabled individuals that need assistance either normally if they're deaf they can get an audio feedback as to what their vote is and actually vote on their own which is a really, really nice thing to do. And there's other assistive approaches. Now what we have back here though, are the voting machines that, that the, the scanners that they used to use in the precinct. Each one of those units right there is an individual uh, field scanner that they would use to scan. Not a full scan, but uh, a, not a digital scan, but basically a optical scan that only does mark detection in certain places. They're very, very simplistic. And they get fooled really easily. Um, so this is a little bit different setup than I'm used to having these, what looks like printers with terminals. I don't know what those are gonna be used for. And let's see, as we look over this way, we're seeing 
get over here so we can look through the window. We're seeing boxes on the on the shelves and kind of see what those are by zooming in. It appears that those are the serial number so we have for example 0863 to 0867 in that box um, I would be willing to bet that they are sorting by precinct at this stage instead of by batch which is going to actually let us check that the 1% manual tally actually works now let's move down this way Here we see workers actually putting the ballots into those machines. They are a pretty simple machine that you have to hand feed. And as you can see there, that one didn't quite go in right. I think that they can feed them in any orientation, they still work. Oh, she's saying, I'm gonna pull that one back out. Oh, it got stuck again. I'm going to try to move this up a little bit more to give you a better vantage point. That one's not feeding. Okay, now she's continuing. Let's move down here a little bit more. An inspector guy coming over. They don't usually mind if I video record out here. So at this stage, it looks like we have three people right there, hand feeding, plus that guy, he's hand feeding as well. He's doing some extra marking and stuff on him. I don't know why he's doing that. Oh, he's applying white out. So here's where even in the vote by mail ballots, they're applying white out with no one watching. It looks like he's applying it just to the timing marks on the side, which would be, I guess, a legitimate application so that they can get it to feed through. So he's probably their, their like troubleshooter if they should have problems. And then over here we have one other person who is apparently feeding them, them in. Taking a good hard look at that ballot. I'm happy that they have these see-through chairs so that you can see through. It can't be used to block your view. Let's go back to this gal here in the front and see what she's doing. fixing up the tray that they're going to put them in. Now with all this happy-go-lucky joking around, you wonder if, if they're actually keeping track of, 
all the ballots that have been processed. She's putting a mark on the end of the ballots and sticking them in that they've already been scanned. Now the next set. Hmm. She's marking them as done as well. So she may have, must have done all of those in the batch. Let's move to a different vantage point. Probably creeps them out that I'm not here with a camera. Again, what we're looking for is, is like this guy back here is by himself whiting out the ballots. Apparently he's just checking to see if they go through, but I don't think he's doing it now. He's probably just fixing them up so that then later they can be returned to the group that they were in. I would say he's actually marking in the middle of the ballot where the votes actually are. I'm not sure why he needs to go in there and vote by mail ballots, which should be the correct ballot for whoever is voting. Now they do have early voting. I'm not too sure if it's active at this point. actually learn a lot by, I find, taking the video and then studying it later, seeing what they're doing. But now that I have my eyes um, educated about what to look for, the trouble with this system that they have is so manually oriented, it's really easy to make mis manual mistakes like either picking up a ballot and, and, and getting two instead of one, or uh, maybe thinking that it misfed and bringing it back and feeding it through again. You know, it has to, it relies upon that operator so much. Okay, so they're worried about what, what happened there. Who knows? She's walking it over here. Let's just follow that ballot, those ballots around. What are they going to do? So this guy here in the glasses, he's he's um, he's a new fellow that I'm not used to seeing, but he looks like the main honcho here. And in those screens, we can see um, probably the activity of what's what's going on. Let me bring this down a little bit so I can look through the eyepiece so I can get it corrected for my bad vision.
Okay. Can't learn much from that. Now that server, that black box in the background, is probably the location of what they call the central tabulator. And it's supposed to be in a super duper secure area. I'm not too sure how secure this is. I see next to his computers a number of what looks like thumb drives or something. Those might be the digital cards that they need to use in each one of these scanners. Now as you look at one of these scanners, you see uh, that there is a card slot in the front. And sometimes they have to configure them through the card slot for the type of ballots they're using. But usually in this configuration, you have all of these scanners are networked into this, these computers right here, which is the central tabulator. And then the scans that they're getting could be, could be mixed precinct scans. Uh, and then there's a de designator on the ballot to determine which precinct it is so that the scanner itself can figure it out. This fellow here is doing something strange. See, it relies upon them a lot to, if there was a misfeed or something. Okay, so there's some sort of a misfeed perhaps. Now he has to say, delete that last one. Delete it again. Now he's looking for why doesn't it feed. <laughs> Made it through. <laughs> ah, another failure. Now he could have picked up the one right before that and fed it through again. Who knows what these operators are actually doing. This is the heart of the system here, the scanning room. And they're still using these pathetic one at a time scanners that really really slow. And most of the other districts that you see are using the high speed scanners that, that go maybe 300 images, you know, sides per minute, 150 ballots. And they don't have the same scanning issues because they just take a picture of the ballot, which is very, very easy to do in comparison to lining it up perfectly so these simple detectors can can recognize where a mark is. Let's see if we can get enough of a of a video here so we know what the failure rate is. good right now compared to all those failures we had when we first started looking at. Oops. Failure. Pretty much all the people here know who I am because I do so much of this.
so the thing is it relies on him to to realize that it was a misfeed pull it back press the button feed it again So let's take a look at the Hey, how you doing? All right, all right. Come on, you're slow. Good. Keep the most busy. Huh? Yeah, I know. <laughs> okay, so there, here's the diagram, and as you see, it's the big square that we are on step seven here for processing the mail ballots, which is what we're working on today. And it isn't really supposed to be tabulating yet. All they're supposed to be doing at this point is scanning them and bringing the numbers in to a, uh, a secure format so that they can be added to the tabulation later, or at least you're supposed to not be able to see it. Back here I see there is, let's see if I can identify that. Might be a ray disc array. There's can't really tell. My bad eyesight. So I'm scanning it. Let's see if we can get um, Trying to get the zoom. Um, to include digital zoom. like it's not able to do it while I'm still running. So this is the scanning room. It's a pretty difficult job to do this. It's very monotonous and this is why it's difficult for humans to do this in this fashion. They should really need to upgrade. Again we've got one, two, three, four, five scanning stations. See what's down here. Excuse me. Okay, this is where they provide maps and on the other services to candidates. Um, it's pretty helpful that you can order a map of your district, and for not too much, they'll give you a really nice, nicely printed map. But these days, with Google, Google Maps is sort of not as necessary. bit of extra oversight these people see that we're watching what they're doing
appears to be whiting out in the right end. Somebody marked right ends. Here's the same thing. I wonder why someone would do that. I have somebody written in for everyone, too. I'm doing that person a favor by... getting rid of the bubble. focus on the right thing here. You're not seeing it very well. I think he's just checking him. He's resetting it each time. Right. Seeing if they make it through before he turns them over to somebody who will actually feed them through. to see those two that were being whited out.
coming down with an empty stuff all day. <laughs> I got an emergency vision. Okay. It looks like these ballots, if you look at them carefully, have already been remarked with some of them with um, blue, or sort of a blue ink or a greenish blue ink. And I think that's the kind of ink they use when they're trying to accentuate the markings or remarking them. Look over here. Apparently he finished that batch, checking them. This woman here is still going through, separating them out for some reason. Them. Ooh. See the whiting out this guy was doing us not getting a log of any kind. And no one was really watching what he was doing except for us. Seems to be looking at something on the wall there. We'll have to see if we can find out what that is when it goes through. She's separating them out. This guy, he seems to be just checking these. They're going to be scanned by somebody else. He presses a button every time. And he looks at something on the wall. We're going to go to the other side and see if we can figure out what that is. Let's go to the other side. This is the kind of work you have to do. You have to kind of try to figure things out by looking, because they're not helpful at all in terms of telling you exactly what they're doing. Oh, I see. That's probably a sheet telling us what the code numbers are. So apparently he's getting a code number off of the machine, telling him what kind of an error it is, and then he looks at his reference guide, that piece of paper on the wall, so that he knows what type of error it is. And she has the piece of paper next to her there. She just looked at the code number. It looks like each one of these people has a, a whiteout um, machine, whiteout tape machine at the ready, so that at any time they can do it. Okay, 
so she rejected that one. It wasn't feeding. She looks at the number on the screen, knows what the issue is. Didn't pull it back. Looks like she should line her box up better with the output. Or move the machine over. And we'll go to the next error and then call it a day. So I have to get going. They're largely trying to help the people out if they did something stupid like voting on all of the write ins, filling in the bubbles for some reason. And then it would normally would have canceled out their, their vote. Now I see here that they're they do have these apparently sorted by precinct because I see it, they have the batch number 475 listed there on the back of that box that he just finished. And then he's bringing them over. So they did a really good thing by what looks like sorting them by precinct. Here's a reject. Apparently didn't read it at all until she's fed it through the right way. So I guess these operators have to identify when they get a reject, pull it back. And this is verifying that Indeed, we do have the ballot sorted by precinct, it looks like. Mail ballots 495. Well, that could be a batch box. But it says Carlsbad 376. I don't know which number they're using. They're, they're we're sorting the mail ballots by just by arbitrary um, batch and then keeping them in mixed precinct batches. The trouble with that is when they do the 1% manual tally, they aren't doing it by batch, they're doing it by precinct, so you can't, and, and they won't give you the report of all of the batches ahead of time. Okay, so we're going to call it a day I'm down here in the hallway. This is the facility. We have a long hallway here where you can observe everything, so that's pretty nice. Okay, Ray Let Citizens Oversight. We'll see you later.